I'd like to talk today about Indra's web. This is a theological idea that everything in the world, in the universe, in the cosmos, is connected like a like a spider's web. Everything links to everything else. Uh, they call it Indra's web, um, or in Hinduism they would call it the Akashic field, and I think in science they call it. Um, the vacuum state or the quantum vacuum. So there's a scientific precedent to this Akashic field. And it, it relates to something that I like to talk about a lot, which is cause and effect. Everybody thinks that cause and effect doesn't work. But of course, if you give it even a little bit of inquiry, you'll realize that of course it does work. Religion, um, and faith has always told us that it works. It's always said it works. It's always said that what you give out will return. It cannot return. It cannot not return. And even if we think we've escaped it, the, you know, our skin will speak a testimony against us because we store our karma, you know, what we've done, what we've thought and said and done in every cell of our body. There's a record of it. I've seen this, I've, I've, it's not something I want to prove to people, it's just something I know. It's, I've got proof in my own life. I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it with all the people around me. <clears throat> so I've always been interested in cause and effect because I've always recognised that if we are able to understand cause and effect, if we understand that what we think today, what we say today, what we do today is what's going to determine our future tomorrow. This is what it says in the Dharmapada, what we have today is as a result of what we thought yesterday. What we have tomorrow will be as a result of what we thought today. So if we fully immerse ourselves you know, with all, our, with all our senses into a thought of something, we create that in the living world. And although uh, people often deny this, you know, this is kind of a, it's a secret that's hidden in plain sight, it's actually very true. And even the people that say, well, if that's true, why am I living such a dark life? Why am I living such a negative life? Why am I living in poverty? Why can't I get work? Why can't I make money? You know, why can't I uh, get a relationship? Why can't I be healthy? Um, and that's because with most people I meet, all they talk about all, all the time is, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people who can't make any money and they keep telling me within the, within the space of a five minute conversation, they might tell me 10 or 20 times that there's no money out there. They can't get a job because the economy is terrible. Um, and, and they, you know, they can't access abundance because there isn't abundance. There is a scarcity. There's nothing out there. Everybody knows that's what the newspapers say. It's what the uh, it's what the television says. But all of the stuff we see in the newspapers and the television is obviously subjective. It's just bits of information. We need to inquire into that. So this this idea that there's not enough is a false idea. There is an abundance out there. There is an abundance that we can create from and when we create from that abundance and we take abundance from abundance the abundance still remains so this concept of indra's web isn't what i like about it is that it's not just talking about cause and effect that what we do has a consequence it's it's actually saying that you know there is not even a time gap you know normally we say well, there's a cause um, and then there's an effect. So we do something and there's an effect to that. So the reciprocal response and there might be a gap between the cause and effect. The gap might be, you know, five minutes or it might be five lifetimes. If you watch, if you watch something like um, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, it talks about the concept of cause and effect rippling over several generations, over thousands of years. It's very powerful. It's very obvious. You know, I'm, when I'm born, 50% of my perceptions are the effect of my, my kind of ancestors' cause. How they were and how they lived has an effect on how I am now. So my lottery, if you like, my um, inheritance when I'm born is that 50% of my perceptions um, are inherited and then the rest are learned and relearned and underlined and underscored and italicized throughout my life. So 
I love the idea that what they're saying in science now is they've been saying it Indra's web is, is, you know, thousands of years old, the concept of it, but what they're saying now in science with the acacic field or the, or the vacuum state is they're saying that when we do something, it doesn't just have an effect at some point in time. It hasn't, an, 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 or on one particular thing. What we do, what we say and what we think and what we do now has an effect on everything all at once, immediately. So everything we do affects everything all at the same time. We have a tremendous, powerful effect on the world around us. Leonardo da Vinci said that when a bird lands in the tree, the whole world changes because everything affects everything. When he was saying that, whether he realised it or not at the time, he was being literal. The moment we act, the ripples of our actions filter out across Indra's web and affect everything at the same time. A bit like if we have a thought in our body, and if we have a thought of arousal, you know, whether it's aggressive or sexual, our whole body will be infused with that thought of arousal. And the more senses we can bring to that arousal, the more our, our hundred billion cells will be affected. But these hundred billion cells that are collected in our body are also connected to everything else in the universe. So our actions have an instant effect on everything. So when we, when people say uh, cause and effect doesn't work because people get away with things, it's actually, that's just a, a statement that hasn't been inquired. No, 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 they haven't really inquired into that belief. It's not, you know, there's been no inquiry there. That's just a statement that people say because they look at John Smith down the road who's a drug dealer and he's a millionaire and he hasn't been caught by the police so they say cause and effect doesn't work. But actually everything we do has an effect on everything immediately, instantly. It ripples out and sometimes we see the obvious effects of that in our life and sometimes the effects of that will come in a different way. We might help John Smith and it, you know, a, a, a reciprocal response might come from Pete Adams or you know, John Jones or whatever. It might come in a different way, it might come in a different shape, it might come from a different person but it will come back. Again this is something I have proof of in my own life. This is when we start to work with the divine economy and in the divine economy we recognise that everything affects everything. Everything we think and say and do has a powerful effect and if we can infuse massive um, emotion into what we do it has even more, uh, even more of a powerful effect. I've seen people, you know, when I've, I've seen the effect of talking to people you know, 5,000 miles away over Skype and I've seen a healing effect just from using the vibration of my words, me being a conduit for the vibration. So not necessarily me, but me being the conduit for um, Heka or words of power um, that invoke potential and you give those to somebody and 5,000 miles away through the World Wide Web or through Skype or through whatever means we're doing, we affect people. But again, without even, if, without even looking at the World Wide Web and all the rest of it, just us here now with what we are and who we are and what we're doing, what we do has an effect across the whole planet. So when people say I've got a million followers on Twitter or I've got uh, a million followers on um, uh, Facebook or whatever it is, whatever social media you're talking about, I know at this moment in time that I am connected to, I have follow, followers, uh, probably 7 billion followers in the world and those 7 billion followers are following me and I'm following them because we're all connected. We are intrinsically connected by energy. So if you get a chance to look up Indra's web um, and look up um, what Laszlo called the Akashic field or uh, Hindus called the Akashic field or the vacuum state or the quantum vacuum is something that helps to describe, to, helps to, um, it's something that helps, helps us to understand how we are and why we are and where we are in the world and the fact that <clears throat> the concept of being not connected, the concept of being lonely is nebulous. 
It's a perception, but it's not true. It can feel true because we can isolate ourselves, but it's not true. So the exciting thing is that what you think, what you say, and what you do today is affecting everything in the known universe, everything at the same time. It just keeps rippling out, keeps rippling back. Once you understand that, you start to think more responsibly about what you do, which is my, my book, The Caretaker, which is, um, the, I'm not sure when you're going to be watching this, but it's, it's coming out um, in <clears throat> June, of 20, June of 2014. Um, is all about this idea that everything is connected and that when we try to work selfishly, when we try to work autonomously, when we try to separate ourselves um, and, and cut ourselves from, off from everybody else, uh, we don't realise that we're hurting ourselves. I can't stand on my own toe and, you know, and it not hurt every single part of my body. You know, I could look at my own toe and try to see it as being disparate or separate, but actually it's a part of me. Well, everything else in the rest of the universe is exactly the same. Everything is connected to us. So if I hurt somebody else, it hurts me. You know, if I'm unkind to somebody else, that's being unkind to myself. Because the current belief, and my own belief, is that everything is joined, everything is one. When we get that, we start realising that everything I do for everybody else is what I do for myself. The way I treat the least of you is the way I treat me, is the way I treat potential is where I treat God. Then you start to be really excited and think <clears throat> there's opportunities every single day, every single second of every single day, to affect everybody and everything in a positive way. We can only do that if we know who we are. Most of the time when people are unkind, when people are cruel, when people are angry and violent, um, they're doing it from an unconscious place. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know who they are, that's why they don't know what they're doing. If they knew who they were, and they had any intelligence at all, any understanding at all, they wouldn't do it, because they know that to do it to other people is to do it to themselves. Once you get that, you start thinking, okay, first of all, I want to find out who I am. Then I'm going to make sure I keep this who I am in stasis, keep them in situ, so that the other parts of me, you know, the other five bodies, the egoic body, the mind body, the sensual body, the physical body, um, are in alignment and subservient to this um, divine CEO, to this authentic self. And I'm just going to make sure that what I put out into the world is stuff that I want to see. Yeah, what I put out into the world is stuff that I want to experience because what I put out into the world is what I'm going to see, what I put out into the world is what I'm going to experience. So it's really important to recognize that we can't do anything to anybody else without doing it to ourselves. Um, it's not intelligent. It's certainly not intelligent for me to be angry with somebody. It's not intelligent for me to be violent with somebody. It's not intelligent for me to be envious or greedy because everything is everything and everything affects everything. So if a bird lands in a tree and the whole world changes, how much more powerful when we think and say and do from a very certain, very powerful, from a very aligned place, what kind of effect are we going to have on the world? When we're working from an altruistic bent, when we're working from an altruistic stance, how powerful is that, that effect going to be in the world? We can then do that if we're working from alignment and we can only be aligned if we know who we are. And we can only be know who we are if we're prepared to look at who we're not. I'm not jealous. I'm not angry. I'm not violent. I'm not envious. I'm not greedy. I'm none of the vices. That's not who I am. They're all shadows. They're all false perceptions. You know, they're all uh, sub-personalities. They all need to be re-educated. Those beliefs and perceptions need to be repurposed, realigned, and I need to just sit in the person that I am. And from that person that I am, I need to act with massive decisiveness and then create the kind of world that I want to experience. But don't take my word for it. Be the proof yourself. Go out in the world and explore. 
go out in the world and inquire, try it for yourself and see the bliss you feel when you connect to somebody else, see the bliss you experience when you start working for other people, knowing that of course what you do for other people is what comes back to you anyway. This isn't about being a great bloke, this is just about basically understanding reciprocity, cause and effect. Um, this is just about understanding Indra's web, this is just about understanding this quantum vacuum, understanding that um, everything is everything. So then you sit down and you look at the world and nothing is the same anymore. You start to, even when you look at the sun in the sky, you realise that even the sun in the sky is not the sun. <laughs> Sharon warned me not to tell this story because it's my weird story, but the sun is not the sun. The sun is radiating um, energy and sustenance. The sun is feeding us every minute of the day. It just becomes separate from a, you stop looking at it as being a star or a planet. You start seeing it as something that is feeding us all the time. I can be grateful for every single thing and recognizing that of course I'm exactly the same. I can be, the, I can be like the sun. I can go out and I can just give light to everybody I meet, to every single person I encounter. Every person I encounter can become an asset. Every person I, I encounter can be a, an opportunity to experience bliss. But to do that I need to have self-control. I need to have emotional and spiritual intelligence. I need to have inquired, like I did. I wrote all the books I wrote about violence to inquire into it and realise that when I was violent, and when I was immersed in violence, I was, my whole life was violent. It was an ugly and unsatisfying place to live. It was a, an awful place to live. When I was violent to other people, I was marinating in violence. It was like living in the ninth circle of Dante's Inferno. It's not how I want to live. It makes no sense at all. So it's just being excited about the fact that when we're aligned and we're working from Logos, Everything we need will come. Everything we want will be present. 